So I was cleaning up Ready 8, the attic office, the other day, and I came across an external drive that had some files on it, including this one. So here it is, the lost conversation with the actress who played Charlie in the original Top Gun, Kelly McGillis. So in 1985, I was uh, in my first F-14 squadron based in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and we were doing an exercise with the guys from Top Gun, and one of the guys was named Hollywood Dishart, and he and I were chatting at the O Club there, and he said, hey, they're making this movie about Top Gun. So how, how did you first hear about this project, and what were your initial thoughts? Well, I first heard about it because I had signed a two-picture deal with Paramount for Witness, and they presented me with uh, Top Gun, and I read it, and I thought it was a fun movie, so I did it, and I thought it would be, you know, it's like a Western in the sky, the good guy, the bad guy, lots of action. I thought it would be really fun to do, and it was, by the way, but I didn't ever imagine it being as big as it was, nor having the legs that it had. Yes, that, that, that was going to be my next question is, you know, did you imagine that here we would be 26, 27 years later, it just endures? To what would you attribute that? You know what, a lot of it I think is Tony Scott's stylizing of that movie. Where does Top Gun fit in your theatrical career? I mean, is it is it a source of pride? It, was it the thing that made you? Is it just sort of a, a lark? Where, where does it fit? pride in it, and I think it sits in a very important place in my career. I think it was the film that kind of made me a household name, and it was also the film that made me, uh, unfortunately and fortunately, recognizable to everybody, because prior to that, I, you know, it's kind of hard to pick me out of a crowd with an Amish hat and a dress on. That's not what I wear in life, so, but that was the, Top Gun was the movie that really kind of thrust me in front of the public eye. So you say, unfortunately, what were some of the downsides of that? Is it the, the typical trappings of fame that you're talking about? For me, it was a very confusing period because I didn't strive to be famous. I don't strive to be famous. And it was very scary. Um, it was scary because it was absolutely unknown to me and foreign to me. I had no reference point, you know? And I think that in some ways it made me very distrustful of people because all of a sudden all these people want to be your friend and you don't know if they're your friend because of you or because of what you do. So we lost Tony Scott back in August. What was it like working with him? Oh, he was wonderful. He was amazing. I think he was such so gifted um, visually. And it's just, I just think it's tremendous loss because he was so gifted. How about working with Tom Cruise? What, how did you get along with him, and uh, what was that like? Well, Tom was really nice. Uh, I really like Tom. I think he's funny. He's nice. He's respectful. He's just a really good guy, and I had a great time working with him. Did the movie enhance your understanding of the military? I mean, you, you hung around Miramar, uh, certainly for some of the shots. What, what did that do uh, in, in those terms for you? Oh, yeah, I think, it, I mean, I've never I'd really been around military people before that, and so it was a whole new experience, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I drank a lot <laughs> there with the boys, and, uh, you know, I had a lot of fun. That tends to happen at the Miramar Oak Club on Wednesdays and Fridays, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. At least it used to before the Marines took the place over and wrecked it. The movie, I just saw it on cable a few days ago, and, it, you know, it's one of those movies, um, and not just because I, I happen to do that as my, you know, job for a few years, but it's one of those movies where you're channel checking. If you see it, you just start watching it wherever it is. You know, every line's a classic. It's, it's, uh, but it has sort of an innocence about it, it seems, that was maybe the world stage, even with a military context in 1986 versus what happened post 9-11 and the wars that we're involved in today. What are your thoughts around that? I mean, is it because I remember one of the reviews actually said it was dangerous because of its quote unquote saber rattling at the time, you know, and that seems a little bit uh, like a stretch when you look at some of the movies that have come out, whether it's Zero Dark Thirty or whatever, you know, Top Gun seems kind of innocent relative to those, wouldn't you think? Yes, I definitely think it's, there's much more of an innocence about it. It's much more, to me, like a Western in the sky. We didn't have any real enemies 
in 1985. You know, uh, today, as you said, it is a very different world. But I know that a lot of people, not a lot, some people made that criticism of the movie. But I thought, you know what, it's a movie. It's an entertainment. It, how can you possibly read so much more into that movie than what's there? So did Tomkin open doors, limit you? Um, what did it do for, for you as an actress in terms of your, your opportunities? Um, I think it opened a lot of doors. It did for me was gave me the opportunity to go and do theater in places that maybe I wouldn't have been considered to do it, you know? So I think it opened a lot of doors. So if you had to pick a favorite line from Top Gun, what would it be? Oh, I can't remember one single line. You can't remember one yeah. single line? Oh, my God, no, I can't. <laughs> okay. So that last answer was uh, kind of a disappointment because I was hoping she'd say something like, you're not going to be happy unless you're going Mach 2 with your hair on fire or another good line like that. Now, that conversation happened in 2011. So fast forward 10 years and we await the release of Top Gun Maverick. Kelly McGillis has not been cast in Top Gun Maverick, and when the Hollywood trade press asked her why she thinks that is so, she answered very bluntly, her words, not mine, I'm too fat and I'm too old. Now, McGillis did wish the actress in the new movie playing Maverick's love interest, Jennifer Connelly, well, and she said she thought she'd do a great job. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. If you'd like to help us take this channel to the next level, please consider being a patron at patreon.com slash wardcarroll. And the Naval Institute Press has Punk's War, my debut novel, in stock once again. You can get your copy at usni.org slash press slash books slash punks dash war. And don't forget our official t-shirts. Check out the links below in the episode description. And I look forward to talking to you again soon.